a little while ago and again now. I read the poetry of Stephen Vincent Bonnet, and uh, I think it's very good and underappreciated. So I'll read some of his book, some of his poems he wrote in a book uh, in the mid to late 1930s, um, whenever all that stuff was happening in Europe. And he wrote a series of nightmares, and I'll read a couple of them now. Nightmare with Angels an angel came to me and stood by my bedside, remarking in a professorial, historical, economic, and irritated voice, if the Romans had only invented a decent explosion engine, not even the best, not even a Ford V8, but, say, a Model T or even an early Napier, they'd have built good enough roads for it. They knew how to build roads from Cape Wrath to Cape St. Vincent, Susa, Babylon, and Moscow, and the motorized legions never would have fallen, and peace in the shape of a giant eagle would brood over the entire western world. He changed his expression, looking now like a combination of Gilbert, Murray, Hilaire Belloc, and a dozen other scientists, writers, and prophets and continued in angelic tones. If the Greeks had known how to cooperate, if they'd never been a reformation, if Sparta had not been Sparta and the church had been the church of the saints, to Argive peace like a free-blooming olive tree, the peace of Christ, who loved peace like a great beautiful vine enwrapping the spinning earth. Take it nearer home, he said, Take these Mayans and their star clocks, their carvings and their great cities, who sacked them out of their cities, drowned the cities with a green jungle, a plague, a change of climate, a queer migration. Certainly they were skillful, skillful, certainly they created. And in Tenochtitlan, the dark obsidian knife and the smoking heart on the city, but a fair city, and the Incas had it worked out beautifully till Pizarro smashed them. The collective estate was there, and the ladies very agreeable. They lacked steel, alphabet, and gunpowder, and they had to get married when the government said so. They also lacked unemployment and overproduction. For that matter, he said, take the Cro-Magnons, the fellows with the big skulls, the handsome folk, the excellent scribers of mammoths. Physical gods, and yet with a sensitive brain, they drew the fine, running reindeer. What stopped them? What kept us all from being Apollos and Aphrodites, only with a new taste to the nectar? The laughing gods, not the cruel, the gods of song, not of war. Supposing Aurelius, Confucius, Napoleon, Gautama, Alexander, just to take half a dozen, had ever realized and stabilized the full dream. How long, O Lord, o Lord God, is the highest? How long, what now, perturbed spirit? He turned blue at the wingtips and disappeared as another angel approached me. This one was quietly, but appro appropriately dressed in cellophane, synthetic rubber, and stainless steel. But his mask was the blind mask of Ares, snouted for gas masks. He was neither soldier, sailor, farmer, dictator, nor munitions manufacturer. Nor did he have much conversation except to say, you will not be saved by General Motors or the prefabricated house. You will not be saved by dialectic materialism or the Lambeth Conference. You will not be saved by vitamin D or the expanding universe. In fact, you will not be saved. Then he showed his hand. In his hand was a woven wire basket full of seeds, small, metallic, and shining like the seeds of Port Portulica. Where he sowed them, the green vine withered, and the smoke and army sprang up.
This one's called Nightmare at Noon. There are no trenches dug in the park, not yet. There are no soldiers falling out of the sky. It's a fine, clear day in the park. It is bright and hot. The trees are in full, green, summer-heavy leaf. An airplane drones overhead, but no one's afraid. There's no reason to be afraid in a fine, big city that was not built for a war. There is time and time. There was time in Norway and time and the thing fell. When they woke, they saw the planes with the black crosses. When they woke, they heard the guns rolling in the street. They could not believe at first. It was hard to believe. They had been friendly and thriving and inventive. They had good arts, decent living, peace for years. Those were not enough, it seems. They were people who wrote books and painted pictures, worked, came home tired, liked to be let alone. They made fun of the strut and the stamp and the strained salute. They made fun of the would-be Kaisers who howl and foam. That was not enough, it seems. It was not enough. When they woke, they saw the plains with the black crosses. There is grass in the park. There are children on the long meadow, watched by some hot, peaceful nuns. Where the ducks are fed, there are black children and white and anxious teachers who keep counting them like chickens. It's quite a job to take so many school kids out to the park, but when they've eaten their picnic, they'll go home, and they could have better homes in a rich city. They won't be sent to Kansas or Michigan at 24 hours' notice, dazed, bewildered, clutching their broken toys, hundreds on hundreds filing the blacked-out trains, just to keep them safe, just so they may live, not die just so there's one chance that they may not live, not die, but live. That does not enter our thoughts. There is plenty of time. In Holland, one hears, some children were less lucky. It was hard to send them anywhere in Holland. It is a small country, you see. The thing happened quickly. The bombs from the sky are quite indifferent to children. The machine gunners do not distinguish. In Rotterdam, one quarter of the city was blown to bits. That included, naturally, ordinary buildings with the usual furnishings, such as cats and children. It was an old, peaceful city, Rotterdam, clean, tidy, full of flowers. But that was not enough, it seems. It was not enough to keep all the children safe. It was ended in a week, and the freedom ended. There is no air raid siren yet in the park. All the glass still stands in the windows around the park. The man on the bench is reading a Yiddish paper. He will not be shot because of that, oddly enough. He will not even be beaten or imprisoned. Not yet. Not yet. You can be a Finn or a Dane and an American. You can be a German or a French and an American. Jew, Bohunk, Nigger, Mick, all the dirty names we call each other. And yet, American. We've stuck to that quite a while. Go into Joe's diner and try to tell the truckers you belong to a master race and you'll get a laugh. What's that, brother? Double talk? I'm a stranger here myself, but it's a free country. It's a free country. Oh, yes, I know the faults and the other side, the lynchers rope, the bought justice, the wasted land, the scale on the leaf, the boars and the corn, the finks with their clubs, the gray sky of relief, all the long shame of our hearts and the long disunion. I am merely remarking, as a country we try, as a country, 
I think we try. They tried in Spain, but the tanks and the planes won out. They fought very well and long. They fought to be free, but it seems that was not enough. They did not have the equipment, so they lost. They tried in Finland. The resistance was shrewd, skillful, intelligent, waged by a free folk. They tried in Greece, and they threw them back for a while. By the soul and spirit and passion of common men, call the roll of fourteen nations, call the roll of the blacked-out lands, the lands that used to be free. But do not call it loud. There is plenty of time. There is plenty of time while the bombs fall on London, fall and turn the world to wind and water and fire. There is time to sleep while the firebombs fall on London. There are stubborn people in London. We are slow to wake, good-natured as a country. It is our fault and our virtue. We like to rise a man to the highest power and then throw bricks at him. We don't like war, and we like to speak our minds. We're used to speaking our minds. There are certain words, our own and others, we're used to, words we've used, heard, had to recite, forgotten. Rub shiny in the pocket, left home for keepsakes, inherited, stuck away in the back drawer, in the locked trunk at the back of the quiet mind. Liberty, equality, fraternity. To none will we sell, refuse, or deny right or justice. We hold these truths to be self-evident. I am merely saying, what if these words pass? What if they pass and are gone and are no more? Eviscerated, blotted out of the world. We're used to them, so used that we have, we have forgot. The way you forget the looks of your own house, and yet you can walk around it in the darkness. You can't put a price on sunlight or the air. You can't put a price on these, so they must be easy. They were bought with belief and passion at great cost. They were bought with the bitter and anonymous blood of farmers, teachers, shoemakers, and fools who brought the old rule and the pride of kings. And some never saw the end, and many were weary, some doubtful, many confused. They were bought by the ragged boys at Valmy Hill, the yokels at Lexington with the long light guns, and the dry New England faces the iron barons writing a charter out for their own iron advantage, not the people. And yet the people got it into their hands and marked it with their own sweat. It took long to buy these words. It took a long time to buy them and much pain. Thence forward and forever free. Thence forward and forever free. No man may be bound or fined or slain till he has been judged by his peers to form a more perfect union. The others have their words too, and strong words, strong as the tanks, explosive as the bombs. The state is all. Worship the state. The leader is all. Worship the leader. Strength is all. Worship strength. Worship, bow down or die. I shall go back through the park to my safe house. This is not London or Paris. This is the high, bright city, the lucky place, the place that always had time. The boys in their shirt sleeves here, the big flowering girls, the bicycle riders, the kids with the model planes, the lovers who lie on the grass, uncaring of eyes as if they lay on an island out of time. The tough kids squirting the water at the fountains, whistled at by the cop. The dope who writes Jimmy's a dope on the tunnel walls. These are all quite safe, and nothing will happen to them. Nothing will happen, of course. Go tell Frank the Yanks aren't coming in Union Square. Go tell the new brokers 
story about the president, whatever it is, that's going to help a lot. There's time to drink your highball, plenty of time. Go tell fire it only burns in another country. Go tell the bombers this is the wrong address, the hurricane to pass on the other side. Go tell the earthquake it must not shake the ground. The bell has rung in the night, and the air quakes with it. I shall not sleep tonight when I hear the plane. And then here's one more. It's called Minor Litany. This being a time confused and with few clear stars, either private ones or public, out of its darkness I make a litany for the lost, for the half-lost, for the desperate, for all of those who suffer not in the flesh. I will say their name, but not yet. This is for those who talk to the bearded man in the quiet office, sensibly, calmly, explaining just how it was, and suddenly burst into noisy, quacking tears. For those who live through the party, wishing for death. For those who take the sensible country walks, wondering if people stare. For those who try to hook rugs in the big, bright room and do it badly and are pleased with the praise. For the night and the fear and the demons of the night. For the lying back on the couch and the wincing talk. This is for those who work and those who may not. For those who suddenly come to a locked door and, though, and the work falls out of their hands. For those who step off the pavement into hell, having not observed the red light and the warning signals because they were busy or ignorant or proud. This is for those who were bound in the paper chains that are stronger than links of iron. This is for those who each day heave the paper mache rock up the huge and burning hill. And then, and there is no rock and no hill, but they do not know it. This is for those who wait till six for a drink, till eleven for the tablet, for those who cannot wait but go to the darkness, and for those who long for the darkness but do not go, who walk to the window and see the body falling, hear the thud of air in the ears, and then turn back to the room and sit down again, not having observed the occurrence but themselves. Christ have mercy upon us. Life have mercy upon us. This is for those who painfully haul the dark fish out of the dark, the child's old nightmare embalmed in its own pain, and after that get well or do not get well. But do not forget the sulfur in the mouth, or the time when the world was different, not for a while. And for those also, the veterans of another kind of war, who say no thanks to the cocktails, who say no thanks, well, yes, give me a Coca-Cola, with the trained smile. Those who hid the bottles so cleverly in the trunk, who bribed the attendant, who promised to be good who broke in the dirty bed in the unknown town, who woke in the dirty bed in the unknown town. They are cured now, very much cured. They are tanned and fine. Their eyes are their only scars. This is for those with the light white scars on their wrists, who remember the smell of gas and the vomiting, and it meant little, and it is a well-known symptom. And they were always careful to phone before. Nevertheless, they remember. 
This is for those who heard the music suddenly get too loud, who could not alter the fancy when it came. Chloral, have mercy upon us. Emetol, have mercy upon us. Nembutol, have mercy upon us. This occurs more or less than it did in the past times. There are statistics. There are no real statistics. There is no... There is also no heroism. There is merely fatigue, pain, great confusion, sometimes recovery. The name, as you know, is Legion. What's your name, friend? Where are you from and how did you get here? The name is Legion. It's Legion in the case history. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Mr. and Mrs. Legion is the name. 